Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, whether you're watching live or listening to the podcast later. Thank you so much for joining us. We have another great guest, another great episode for you guys. We're so excited you're all here with us. We'd love to hear from you. If you've got something you want to put in the chat, go ahead and do that. If you're listening later and you got comments, thoughts, feedback, you can email us at thevisuallounge at techsmith.com. So today, before I get into our guests, a real quick thing. If you didn't notice, you probably did, but if you didn't notice, Camtasia has a new release. Camtasia 2021 is out next week in our show. We're gonna be talking about some of the things that you need to know about that version, including like 75 new transitions, some cool, awesome new effects like audio ducking and much more. We'll get to that next week though, because our guest is super awesome. He is someone that I've had the opportunity to get to know and meet. Uh, his name is Owen, we, we call him Owen Video because he is an awesome master of video. And he is someone that I look to about video techniques and ideas because he is working with tons and tons of small businesses and organizations to help them up their video game and get going and make sense of how they can use that for their advantage. So with that said, I'd like to welcome to the show, Owen Video. Owen, welcome. Hey, Matt, so good to be here with you. I think the last time we hung out, hung out was it was in a distant city and I left my credit card in your car. Yeah, in Grand Rapids, Michigan, of all places, you actually came Grand to us. <laughs> you, that's right, Grand Rapids, Michigan. I remember that. That was a great time and, and I love everything that TechSmith is doing right now with these new products and these, these new softwares. And so I'm excited to, to be here today. Well, Owen, we're, we're glad to have you. Just to level set with everybody that maybe they haven't seen your work, which they, they obviously should go out and see. Tell us a little bit about yourself to help us to know where you're coming from. Yeah, sure. My name is Owen Video. It's not my real last name. My real last name was changed when my family moved here from overseas. We came across Ellis Island and we changed our name. You guys have heard this before. You come over on Ellis Island, they changed their name. It was my great, great, great grandfather, Owen newspaper. <laughs> is, it, is this thing on? Is hello? It, is it, you know, but tunk, you know, tunk, actually, tunk. Uh, I, I, Owen video is the name that uh, I sort of began going by uh, because everything I do since I was nine years old has had to do with video. You know, my dad had one of those big shoulder mount cameras uh, that uh, he got us for Christmas. And so I was always making sketch comedy videos and claymation Lego style videos with my dad's video camera. And then as I got, um, older in life, I, I moved into YouTube and I was using YouTube to sell um, e-commerce products. And, and from that, I realized kind of like the gold rush of 1949. It was like, hey, I could either dig for gold or I could sell the shovels, you know. And so I began knocking on doors, literally like going door to door with my camera in my hand. And I said, hey, I'll, I'll make a I'll make a video for your company right now today for twenty dollars. And, you know, this is like a loss leader. I wasn't like making any money on it, but it, it, it trained the customer to, to exchange money with me, you know, and then I would give them the video. I did like 10 very simple shots and put them all together. And um, this was back in like 2008, 2009. So YouTube was brand new and everybody wanted to kind of get involved. Uh, from there, they called me back and they're like, can you do more videos? Can you build my YouTube channel? Can we turn this into an ad and all that kind of stuff? And so that's when uh, my company was born. Uh, we did over six figures in my first year, and um, then we moved into coaching, and we've been helping business owners uh, launch and grow YouTube channels that generate revenue through product sales since about 2012-ish, you know, somewhere around there. And so our specialty is working with brands, companies, and, and uh, um, you know, showing them how to use YouTube for business purposes. That, that is awesome. And you actually made me think of an experience I had uh, when I was in an undergrad. I went to a business and I was like, I was kind of looking for a new job as an, you know, as an undergrad, you're a college student, what do you do? And I said, not video. I said, like, I would love to make some training for you. And I thought there would be a yeah. video involved. And the guy's like, no, here. And it was like this terrible job of going out like door to door to like try to get people to get a water softener or something, which, you know, whatever. Yeah. And he's like, prove to me that you can do this first. And, you know, right. I was just like, it, I didn't, ex I did not teach him to exchange money with me, no. but I, I love hard. that story. It's hard. I, I kind of grew up in sales, right? Like ever since I was a kid, I wanted to be sort of in sketch comedy, believe it or not. And I, I do have a, a very successful TikTok comedy channel at Owen video. Um, if you want to check that out where I do family comedy with my, my kids, but I always wanted to do that. 
but it was like uh, I, I don't want to go to Hollywood kind of thing. Like I don't want to like like I don't want to audition. I don't want to do that route. So I got a job in sales, and I've been in sales for a long time. So I learned kind of like how to sell. So for me, when I started door to door, you know, I really got into playing the part, and I I actually bought a fishing vest. No joke. And and then I would put film because I didn't use film, but the customers knew what film was, right. you know, and, and it was just like this looking the part Hollywood actor sort of thing where I put the, the, the film in my in my pocket and I would walk into the store with my camera on my tripod and like a director style cap, you know, like a Newsies cap or whatever. So I looked the part and that was like all part of, of the selling process. And then of course, like having this $20 loss leader, I mean, they could pull 20 bucks out of the register right then and there and give it to me right then and there. And so that made it really, really easy for them. The trick was like going back on the resale and like getting them to get six more videos from me. But I blending sales with video has always been my superpower. So while a lot of my colleagues who I love and respect dearly, we're very different, you know, like they're, they're sort of working with, uh, I do pranks on my boyfriend. I do pranks on my girlfriend channels, right? Where, where we focus on, you know, Hey, I'm, I'm a six figure brand. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a business coach and I have a successful podcast. I'm writing a book and I want to start using YouTube. What should I make videos about? Right? Like how do I get customers to find those videos? And oftentimes what we see is a lot of room for improvement. You know, companies are making videos that are just like constantly selling people or um, they're just boring. You know what I mean? And like, how, how can we make these a little bit more entertaining? And that's a, that's the part of my job that I've always just loved. So, oh, and obviously you've got a wealth of experience and maybe this is, uh, you've already sort of touched on this, but if I'm a small business owner and yep. I'm thinking, gosh, I see all these people doing video. It feels like maybe I sometimes should do, but I've got, I've got all the priorities in the world, all the things that I'm thinking about, worried yeah. about, stressed about. And now someone's coming saying like, yeah, you should be making video. Like yeah. why should they prioritize video over something, something else? Cause something's yeah. probably, it's not going to be like, like add video in the mix. It's going to be like, I'm not going to do these things cause I'm doing this. It's true. And, and it's, it's really true what you just said. Like the commitment to do video is quite often the commitment to not do something else because we're all so jam packed. It's like, I got to make video on top of all the other things that I'm supposed to be doing. And the reality is this video will be so productive for your sales team that it, you'll want it to replace some of the other things that you're doing. And Glenn is a great example of that. Glenn Kowalski is one of our clients in uh, the video marketing school. He's one of our advanced clients, which means he's in my bigger program. And when he started this, he's like, I really don't know how I'm going to have the time to do this. Since creating just five or six videos with us, they've done incredibly well. His, his new thing is I am now building my business around the YouTube channel. And, and using this as my primary marketing means. So how did we do that, right? How did, how did we get him to this place where it's so valuable to his company now that, that everything he does kind of stem, stems from YouTube? It's by teaching systems, right? Because when, when you're like a, a part-time YouTuber, like a kid throwing buckets of paint off a bridge and going viral, <laughs> you, you know, that's great. But YouTube's like your side passion. It's your side hustle. You live at home. You have all the time in the world. Business owners need to leverage systems. And whether you're a do-it-yourself business owner or you have a team business owner, there are systems for you to fall into place. And, and we teach a four-step process that we call the Video Pro System. Okay, the Video Pro System. And you can actually search for the hashtag Video Pro on any platform and see our posts and see what we talk about. But it's four steps programming, production, promotion, and progress. And they all start with pro. You see how we wow. see what we did there is like a thing I, that we did. And you got, whole, uh, you got a system it, within a system. I know. It's like the it's like inception. And I'll tell you, we were we were driving home uh, from Utah, where uh, at the time we lived in San Diego when we we're driving home from Utah, and it's like we're we're driving along, doo -doo -doo -doo, and my wife goes, I got it. 
you know, and she goes progress. And that was the last pro in our system. And that was a funny way of how we came up with this, but let's review those four systems. Cause if you know these four systems, then you can outsource those or you can scale them. And then that's all you have to focus on. So programming is your content strategy and it's the kind of videos you're going to make and how you're going to deliver those videos, right? Are they talking head? Are they animations? Please, for the love of Moses, don't do um, animations. But talking heads, is it going to be green screen? Is it going to be a news style thing? What are you doing? That's your programming. So figure that out first. Like you should have 40 pieces of uh, like 40 potential titles written down on a sheet of paper before you even make one video, right? You don't want to be in this place where you're like, what video am I going to make today? Right. Um, that moves you into your production. Now that you know your programming, how are you going to produce it? What do you need to produce a, a talk show style thing? Do you need a second camera like I've got here? Like, whoa, you probably don't need that. But if you do need that, you need to get that set up. Like maybe you need some sound foam or a, you know, a set back there. But your production is how you get the video made, shot, edited and the thumbnail produced. OK, who are the people that do those things? And you want to develop a system by where you make a video and then boom, it gets edited. The thumbnail gets made and all this stuff happens while you're asleep. That lead, now you got a video done, right? So you want to promote it now. The promotional skill set. We create a promotional checklist, right? Where once the video is done, you do this with it. You do that with it. You share it here. You share it there. You repurpose it here. And for some of you, that promotion list might be really small. For some of you, it might be really big and it might take an actual two weeks to get through it all. And that's okay. But the promotional skill set answers the question of when you publish, how often, where you publish to, what hashtags you use. And we create templates for all those things. And finally, now that the video is out, you want to check on the progress. And that's the fourth step is looking at your analytics and seeing how do we do, right? Like which of these, we shared at seven different places, which place gave us the best results is it ranking for any keywords are we in a place where people are watching most of the video or are they xing out in the first 10 seconds youtube gives you all of this information but if you don't know how to sift through it like with, with structure you're gonna lose hours of your time stressing out or you're gonna you're gonna not know your stats at all and you're gonna keep making videos that are like based on nothing Right. For example, I was with a client the other day and I said, can you show me? She's like, I want to do this style of video. And and she goes, but I'm not sure if it's good for my channel. Maybe I should just stop doing it. And I said, well, let's let's go back at your stats and, and look at where your most subscribers came from. We did that search and the most of her, the bulk of her subscribers came from that style of video. And she goes, I can't believe I was thinking about cutting this. And I was like, that mm. is why. We follow the four-step process. You always look at progress before renegotiating your programming. So it's a cycle. You know, it all works together, and it's only four things. Anybody else who is promoting to you like the 17, 18 steps to YouTube success, you're going to get buried in that, and it's probably not going to work for you. Four simple steps. Master those, and YouTube will become your, your biggest source of revenue this year. Well, I, I love this because it's so simple. It's very straightforward. And I think from, from like, I think about our audience that might be watching this, right? We've got this, the people that are small business owners. We've got people who are working in training departments in large organizations, or maybe they're creating customer education for, for their company's, you know, product or tool. And in every one of the situations I know I could go in and I could apply those four things to any yeah. one of those roles. It's not just small businesses we're talking about. So I love that. And I love that it, it hinges on because I'm gonna tell I'm gonna be honest here. I've been there, maybe even this week with uh, talking about like, well, what should we make? Um, yeah. Which is which? Okay, whatever. I I've got lots of experience. I can probably pull it off on on a good day. On a bad day, it's not gonna work. But like, so I love that you're thinking about this and you're making it so that you know you're not having to work nearly as hard as maybe I would otherwise to create video. Yeah. It's not like I heard, you hear this expression oh and like pulling teeth like. I feel like people think about making videos pulling teeth, but what, the way you've laid it out is like, no, you don't have to pull teeth at all. You've got it yeah, all systematized. It is systemized. And, and you want to like, you want to come up with video ideas when you're in a creative zone, right? So you don't want to be in a place where you're like, oh, shoot, I have to be on camera. I got to brush my teeth. I got to comb my hair. I got to clean up my desk. 
oh, I also have to be creative and figure out a best video. Like you want to be in a place where you sit down with your team or your wife or your, your partner or whatever it is and, and go, uh, okay, we're in creative mode now. We've got some coffees, some espressos here. Um, let's come up with 40 video ideas. That's when you want, and you do like, you're not going to make 40 videos this year. Like I'll, if you can do 40 videos this year, I want you and I are going to talk, we'll collaborate on something, but you're probably going to do not that many. And so you, you have the whole year of video content that you came up with in your most creative zone. And here's the deal. You can always go back and revise that. Y you can always go back and, and sort of like add to it or take from it. But, but this way, when you're in, I need to make a video today mode, you, you can trust what you wrote down when you were in creative mode, you know, and, and you, I'm going to pick this title and make a video about it. And when your energy is there, then, then you're able to make a better video. Cause the reality is, you know, you may not even have to edit your video. Now I know cause like you're, uh Oh, Camtasia, <laughs> we want people to edit. You may not even have to edit your video. You know, in, in, in some cases, or you're editing very limitedly. But even as a business owner, you know, you could be outsourcing your editing for like three hundred dollars a month and getting eight to ten videos a month from that. I think a lot of business owners don't know this. Like you just they just didn't know. Oh, I really? And, they, and it won't be crappy editing. No, like everybody knows how to edit these days. You know what I mean? It's not like it was 10 years ago. So we, we actually teach our clients to two edits. You snip off the beginning and you snip off the end, mm -hmm. right? And then everything that happens in the middle is a formula. It's G-R-E-A-T. That's how you do a video. Uh, I, in fact, when I was in Grand Rapids, Michigan with you, um, I was training on this on and, and how to use Camtasia to, to edit your video according to G-R-E-A-T. So you, you get in front of your camera and you, you're going to talk about, you know, like how to, how to uh, uh, fix a bathroom sink. Um, G, how am I going to grab attention in this video, right? R, how do I relate to the viewer in this video? How do I E, explain the solution in this video, right? A, how do I provide some actual proof, a testimonial? And then T, I'm going to tell them what to do next. What do, I, what do I say? You can answer all those questions on a quick sheet of paper. Sit in front of your camera and, and deliver the video. When you're done, you snip off the end, you snip off the beginning, and you upload that to YouTube. And you'll have a fantastic video, you know, but oh, and what about like, what about these little yellow things and the cool sound effects? Like, you know, hey, we'll get to that. But but imagine the guy who is got a leaking sink, sink. His sink is leaking right now. Say that three times fast. He's got this bathroom sink that's destroyed. Water's going everywhere. He goes to YouTube. And it's like how to fix a leaky sink. And he's watching your video, and it's filled with all these like, welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. <laughs> you know, he's out of there, man. Like, just yep. get up the content. And the same is true for those of you guys making training videos. You know, if you're making training videos for clients or for customers or even for your staff, like, just kind of, like, deliver the information and, and move on. Once you get that down really good, we'll talk about it. Use the Camtasia templates to, to add some flair. But I think it's less important than just delivering great content. Yeah. So I, I, I've been holding this pun back. And just, I want to say to you, Owen, this is great. This is great information. Uh, no, but, but seriously, it's, it's fantastic. Again, I love this, I love this notion that you've, you've broken down. And we've, we've talked about this in other places on our, our podcasts about like, you know, simple templates for scripting and creating. And I love that that's an easy yeah. one, right? Because you get all, it's not just about what, what am I going to say? It's the components that you need to make sure you're thinking about. One of the questions yeah. I want to ask you is you're talking about like, you know, get your list created when you're at your most creative, which I, I think is, is a really wise advice because I think it's too easy to say, no, I just need to make a list right now and not be feeling it. When you get your list, so let's say we're working together and I was your client and I, I've got, I, I did that process and I've got a list and I, I've got 60 things. I've got 60 topics I could talk about. What's your thoughts? How do you go through and decide like where to start? Because I think one thing is I look at YouTube in particular and I look at the competition that's out there that's making video and I'm feeling, oh my gosh, this is so much. I just feel yep. overwhelmed. And now yeah. we've got a list of 60 things. I don't really know where to start. So yeah. how, how do you make that decision? 
That's such a great question. Uh, and it falls into programming, right? What's our programming strategy? And what we do is we teach our clients to make content that the algorithm will respond to. So knowing how the YouTube algorithm works is, is really essential. I don't know that we have time for all that today. So let me just share with you what that means for, for you as the creator. I want you to think about your YouTube channel like a table, like a table with four legs. And the tabletop, that's your brand and the value you bring to the customer. Okay, so it's it's you know, hey, at the just example, we had a call this morning with Mandy, who's a walking coach, right? And so, you know, I'm Mandy Joe, and I help women lose weight with walking. That's your value statement. That's your tabletop. Okay, so now all the content that you're going to make, you want to try to fit that into four categories, four legs that will support your table. Okay, so you can come up with ten legs. And many of our clients do, or seven legs, but you need at least four primary legs on your table that reinforce the value statement. We call this silos. And it reminds you of walking into a candy store and you can see a silo of all green jelly beans, right? There's no red jelly beans in that green jelly bean silo. And then there's another silo of yellow jelly beans, right? And they keep all these things color coded, but they're all jelly beans. So your, your channel works the same way. So if you're a walking coach and you help people lose weight through walking techniques, then you might have one leg that is like uh, of, your, of your table that is, that is like how to, how to warm up, like warm-ups for walking. And then you might, and you might have like, you, you know, how to warm up your legs for walking, how to warm up your thighs for walking, how to warm up your lower body for walking, how to warm up your mind before walking. And you've got all of these titles in that category of video that that fit into that one silo okay let's apply this to a different style business take another leg and it's your sales silo so what do are the five or six or seven things a customer needs to know before they buy product a that's another silo right and it's like um seven reasons to buy product a um, customers who best get benefits through product A, how to get X benefit by using product A. And you divide the rest of your product line into these different silos. You create a, a biggest mistakes people make with uh, product A, um, how to install product A. You know, you could really follow the same template for all of your video titles and apply it to multiple different silos to build this channel. And you just take one silo at a time. So, you know, my question to that or my response to that business owner is, what are the four big categories of product you want to sell? Or what are the four big topics that, that you want to talk about? And then what are, what are five sort of subcategories in topic one? That becomes the first five videos you're going to make. The, the trick, I think, with that, and I really should just stop talking, but the, the trick is you just trust yourself. Like there's time to do the other videos because the thing is, it's like, okay, I'm going to do these first five, but what about the next five? What if this fails? What, I have to let you, look, just, just do the first five, take a break and then do the second five. You know what I mean? You've got yeah. time to do it all, but you can't do it all first. So what I've given you is a systematic way of dividing your content and then going about it. You just have to not chicken out the day of filming. And that's, I think, where we lose people. No, I, again, I, this is such, I, I hope everyone listening is recognizing the, the depth of wisdom and experience that you're just, you're just pouring out knowledge here. And this is fantastic because I do think, I think a lot of people feel like they get overwhelmed by the amount of content they feel like they need. Like every, every, yeah. YouTube, like every YouTube channel starts blank, right? Or every learning center or academy or whatever, there's, there's nothing in there. And you have to start someplace and just pick the thing that you think is going to help. And, and then going back to the other things you talked about, go and measure that progress, right? Like go and yeah. look, did this really help? And you're, you're, yeah. it's like walking the stairs. I can't get to the top of the stairs without taking some steps, but I'm going to, along the way, I have to measure to make sure I really, I, I've done the work, right? Like I'm not just yeah. on an escalator going the wrong way. <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, going back to Glenn, uh, Glenn is a freedom coach. So, so he helps seven figure entrepreneurs 
uh, relocate, pay less taxes, offshore accounts, Bitcoin. It's this whole thing. And uh, it's really a cool, uh, a cool coaching business to to be in. Now, uh, he he lives in Panama. And so he's doing a, a, a bunch of different things. He's doing a series on Bitcoin. He's doing a series on uh, called Renegade News. That's like um, news for the liberty minded individual. Right. And and then he's got um, these uh, how to live abroad or banking abroad. And then he's got this other one about living in Panama. Well, what happened was the we started making all of these videos in different silos. And the Panama silo took off like it went viral for his channel. Now, viral doesn't mean millions and millions of views. It means outside of your individual network. So it went way bigger than his network. It got a couple thousand views on it. And that was big for a brand new channel. So that is how the programming or excuse me, the progress influenced our programming. So we decided to make more videos on Panama. And he's actually at this place now where he's like, oh, and I am so bored of making Panama videos. <laughs> uh, and 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 he knows what I'm going to say. And I, I'm going to say, yeah, but how are they performing? You know, um, they're performing yeah. extremely well. And so you've got to keep making them. I mean, think about like um, uh, Hershey. I forget his first name, but the guy who made Hershey bars, right? Like he cranks out. Hershey has been cranking out the same chocolate since like the 1890s so if that if that chocolate machine were a person that he would be very bored of cranking out chocolate you know, you know her man i've been cranking out the same hershey bar for 150 years but it sells now they have other stuff you know that they're doing but that hershey bar man like that's that's the golden ticket right there and so that's the trick with your channel is you start with like four legs of your table four big categories but when something hits and, and it starts to go go viral for you, you make more of those videos until it stops working. And that's, I think, where, where businesses struggle. You have a video that does well, and you don't even know it's doing well, right? Because you're not checking your analytics or you don't know what to check. When you yeah. know what's doing well and you make more of it, you're bringing new people to the channel, and then it's in those videos. Like, for example, in the Panama videos, we tell them, hey, don't forget to check out Renegade News on Sundays, right? And so now we're awareing them to content on the channel they didn't know about before. So, you know, what what we're talking about here is, is being lived out in real world examples by people who run or work for, you know, large companies. It's not, um, forgive the expression, the, the, the teenager in dad's basement who has all the time in the world, right? It's people like you and me uh, making six, seven figures from YouTube alone. Well, more like you <laughs> making well, six or seven Brian, figures, not me. Uh, yeah, <laughs> no, I guess, yeah, between us. But, but you know, I don't want to comment on your paycheck. But certainly, making you're profitable with video. As long as I've known you, um, in fact, I'm only Owen Video because of Matt Pierce. Do you guys want to know why? Uh, because I, I've been calling myself Owen Video for a long time, but I couldn't get any of the domains. I couldn't get OwenVideo.com. Some dude owned it. I couldn't get Owen Video on Twitter. Some dude owned it. I couldn't get Owen Video on Facebook. Some dude owned it. And then I'm sitting down with Matt Pierce, and we're in San Diego, and we're we're like I don't know we're having lunch or something, and and we're about to do a video actually. And I said to him, man, I just I can't buy the, these domain names i i can't buy owen v. I, like it's all bought up somewhere and he goes we just hired a guy whose company is called owen video and it was true there's a guy who is named uh well here there's a guy who works with matt so who, just so owen, you know he he's been on the po he's been on andy's been on the podcast andy owen, owen he is a regular on our Friday episodes of video that we call Video Workflow. So Andy Owen is part of the Visual Lounge. <laughs> and he owned all the Owen video assets. So you introduced us. He, be, he became a friend. And after about a year, he ended up selling me all of those, those rights. And so um, uh, video, Camtasia, TechSmith, and the team over there has been a huge part uh, of, our, of our growth here. And, you know, it's amazing what can happen through the power of video, not just careers, 
uh, but great business opportunities. And so, you know, like we're hearing in the in the comment section, um, you know, having a great video takeoff really can can make a big difference for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you know, I, I, I think the, you're, the truth that you're speaking here about video, it's so powerful. And I think never in this in the time of the world has it been better for people to be able to, to kind of harness that opportunity, right? Because w video editor, there we go. Look at that. Because uh, we have such a, such a privilege to have so many great ways that... We, can you imagine, you know, 20, 30 years, you were making video, but it was nothing like today. Right? Oh, no way. Are you kidding me? Like to have, I started out on a VHS cassette thing, right? Like shoulder mount. My dad's taking it to the T-ball games, filming hours of T-ball that no one's ever going to watch. You know? <laughs> um, and in those days you couldn't edit. So it was like, you had to like, you, you had to, you had one take and it was just like, okay, stop. Okay, stop. You know, and that, that sort of thing. Uh, you could buy editors, but who, you know, who was actually, who was actually doing that? When, when I started, um, nobody had the skills that I brought to the table. I, I, I had got my degree in media, um, but this was actually after some, like I was already making videos for two years before I went back to college, but, but I already had like this, this basic talent that nobody had. Now it's kind of like 14 year olds have it. So that's a good thing right here. Why? Because you could, you could kind of hire a 14 year old, not literally, but any 14 year old could do it. Right. Which means, uh, Pakistan, which means the Philippines, which means South America, you know, we have, and, and in the U S I, I have editors and, and video people in all of these places because it's a, it's a skill everyone needs now, which makes it more affordable. And it means you don't have to be an expert, which means that the thing that you're good at becomes the thing that you do on camera see when i started even having a camera made me cool but that's not enough anymore now it's my sparkling personality right but for for those of you like that have a business or a product that's what that, that that's what becomes the star of, of the show you know and and it's not about your personality so much if you have a great charismatic personality sure use that as a as a tool but if you're kind of like dry as toast, but boy, do you love widgets, then then sh sit down in camera and just show off the widget. You know what I mean? Because here's the thing. If I have a problem that that your widget solves, I don't care about your personality. I care about the widget. You know what I mean? And make your widget the star. You could even make a whole silo uh, just on on problems that your widget solves right lose weight with my widget feel great with my widget change your metabolism with my widget and and so on and so forth yeah and i and i love that i mean we're all about it uh solving problems and i think one of the things i say about youtube in particular is it's probably the world's greatest how-to engine right like people oh, yeah. are searching for answers they're going to youtube they're going to watch video and it's not just the home kind of like oh i'm gonna fix my sink i i think there's plenty of that but there's also like, I need to solve this business problem. I need to know how to use this software. I need to know how to do X, Y, and Z. I'm going yeah. to YouTube because I'm going to find something. And it's just so many options available to me. And if there's not, there's opportunities for, for someone to, to own that space. Yeah. And you know what? There's already somebody else doing it. You know, it's going to be very rare that there's nobody like you on YouTube. There's somebody doing something. And we call it competitive research. It's the first thing we teach in our in our program over at MakeYouTubeEasy.com. You you got to find the people that are in your niche, and if you know how to do what we teach you to do, then the algorithm will show you the top videos in your niche every day when you log in when that homepage refreshes, right? And so you could make a whole silo of just making videos similar to videos that already exist right so if there's a video out there that's like you know um uh how to uh how, how to write a blog post you know you could create a video called like how to write a blog post better how to write a blog post faster how to write a blog post that ranks and and what you're doing is you're you're borrowing from their title to make a follow-up video that you're hoping, right, that the algorithm will catch on to and, and suggest. So that as, as, you know, your competitors' videos are being shown, 
um, your videos pop up right after. And that's where you win the YouTube game, right? Like there, there's a lot to be said about search engine ranking and ranking a video. That will get you so far, right? But you really want to be triggering the YouTube suggested algorithm so that people are watching your videos outside of when they need you, right? Because when you, when you rank for a term, like uh, how to do X, Y, Z, you're only getting people that need you. You're, you're, a, you're an encyclopedia to them. You're, you're a tool for them. But, but when you get suggested and they watch it, then, then you're actually something that they enjoy watching. Uh, that's an entertainment value thing. And that's something that uh, is extremely valuable that you should be looking at, you know, and you could be the news anchor of your industry. You know, you could be like, um, here's what's happening in the widget space. And I know, Matt, like I, I know a lot of your, I guess, customer base. And they're kind of, it's like, it's, you got some tech in there. There's some industry in there. And they're using Camtasia and the similar tools to make training videos or, 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 or whatever it is. Um, like very, very niche. There are people searching for those things. I guarantee you. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. So forgive, us, I, forgive me if I'm not hitting like your specific industry in this. Uh, but I've worked, I actually worked with a guy who made conveyor belts for ammunition companies. No joke. And he's like, there's nobody else like me on YouTube. I, I do what I know how to do. And I found like three. <laughs> so, so you just have to know how it works. And, and then when you, it kind of gives us ideas for what types of videos. So I don't care how niche you are. There's a, a place for you on, on YouTube. Yeah. Well, I want to I want to take a question from the the audience, and and we'll see if, the, if you've got any thoughts about this. This one comes from Peter. He says, "How about the viewer experience on, of the tube uh, bombarding us with ads? And do you have any tips on making it sure ads are being served up to align with your channel? Is there something you teach your channel owners or something you're thinking about? Like, so obviously with YouTube, you know, you got advertisements coming in." You know, if you're trying to make revenue that way, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming there's a lot of people who watch this that aren't worried about that. They're just trying to get promotion for their business. Any yeah. thoughts, Owen? Yeah, that's a it's a really packed question. And let's see if we can get through it, because it's kind of like if you answer it one way, then that that question forks into three different options. And then you pick one of those and then that option forks into two more. So let me just try to kind of break that down. So when you go onto YouTube, um, an ad will play in front of your video. So if I'm going to go watch, uh, you know, a video on how to fix a broken sink, uh, they're going to put an ad in front of me that may have nothing to do with plumbing. It may have everything to do with plumbing. I, I, it really depends. And if I refresh the screen, it'll play another ad that it thinks that I would enjoy. And sometimes you'll get an ad that's based on what Google knows about you because Google owns YouTube. They may play you an ad based on your location. Like during election season, we get a lot of YouTube ads from local candidates, right? But then there's other times where the ad I see is for uh, TurboTax or, or some national brand, okay? So there's ads that play in front of your channel. If you own the video that, that I'm trying to watch, then I get a commission off of that ad playing in front of you, right? They call this AdSense. And so from the viewer's perspective, you may feel you're being bombarded with ads when you just want to watch YouTube videos. So how do you get away from that? Well, you can join the YouTube. You can subscribe to YouTube. YouTube has a $12.99. It might be more now, but I pay $12.99 um, to go ad-free. And I don't see any ads when I log into YouTube ever at all. Now, for me as a marketer, it's kind of like a disadvantage because I like to know who's advertising. So I, I actually have a separate channel that I log into and I see ads on, on those. But, but you can join the, the YouTube subscription program and get rid of ads. You can also get an ad blocker and an ad blocker will, will not show the ads. When you block the ads, you are taking money out of a creator's pocket. That may bother you. It may not. You know, that's, that's totally up to you. And I have no judgment on you either way, right? Like we've all got families. Um, but that's how it works, you see. Now, as a creator, if you're uploading videos 
and you want the ads to play in front of your stuff. For example, we have a channel, um, uh, me and my family, I mentioned that we have a, a funny TikTok channel. We, we do some of that on a, on a YouTube channel. That is a family-friendly channel, which means it's basically uh, PG is kind of like where we like to keep it. So we don't want advertisers on that channel that are not aligned with our values. And what I can do is go into my AdSense account and I can manually um, uh, by name say these people can't advertise on my channel or I can sort of put parameters on my channel uh, to uh, make sure that YouTube only plays what I what I want them to play. When you do that, you're limiting your ability to uh, make money on the channel. Um, so there's uh, you you still will make money on the channel. That that matters. But for most of us, I think listening to this, our money is made on product sales and revenue. So so like, you, you, who cares about the AdSense, right? Like, I'm. I know a lot of the YouTube community, these big YouTubers, right? 10 million, sure, love these guys. You know, I've got good friends here. Every single one of them makes their money more on a product sale, whether it's a membership site, merchandise that's in Target or T-shirts or something like that. They make way more money on revenue sales than on AdSense, even though they might be making 15 grand a month in AdSense, right? So it's there. That explains it, and you can make those decisions thusly. Yeah. Well, that was great. Well, thank you, because I, I learned a few, thing or two about AdSense and all that. Um, oh, and we, we are coming to a portion. I want to introduce a new, to a new section of the podcast today. We're going to go into what I'm going to call our speed round questions. So the cool. goal here is to ask you, I've got uh, about five or six questions. I want you to answer just super quickly. Uh, okay, I'll us try some of them are short, uh, meant to be, you know, maybe a few word answers, if that. Um, but we're going to move through them qu pretty quickly. And if you go too I'll long, I, I'm, I'm going to cut you off. Guy. Okay. I'm a wordy I, guy. So I'm going to try my best. I'm going to get I, ready. Maybe you guys can hear my motivation. Okay. All right. Are we, are we ready? Let's go. Number one, best video investment you suggest to others make? Oh, the Canon M6 is, is worth it. Every penny. All right. Favorite small brand that's making videos that aren't Hollywood or big budget? Oh, Angelica Ventrice, fitness channel. Absolutely love what she's doing. All right. Where do you turn for video inspiration? My mentor, Daryl Eves. Nice. Daryl's got some great stuff. If you guys don't know Daryl, go check out Daryl's stuff. He does yeah. so many good stuff. If you could do... Uh, if you could only do one, would you rather be on camera or behind the camera? Uh, be on camera. Please get me. Don't let me push any buttons, please. <laughs> okay. Last question. Uh, and you can think about this in either for your videos or just for your listening to entertainment, techno or pop music. Oh my gosh. Like it's going to be neither, but techno because pop is the devil. Anything, <laughs> that's, like, anything that's mainstream. I like, I'm like anti, like I'm anti-corporate. Like I don't go out, wear this on my sleeve. I don't go protest. I'm not that guy, but it's just like, I want to bank at a local bank. I want to shop at a local place. I love farmers markets and, and things like that. Like I like to buy my milk from the farmer. You know what I mean? So yep. yes, I, I would go with whatever is not mainstream. That's the one I'm going to geek out on. Okay. So now with that done, I'm going to turn around and give you a chance. What's one question you want to ask me? I'm going to ask you, what, why did you change so much? You are a different guy than what I saw. You had a beard. You had glasses last time. So what inspired, what encouraged the change? Well, okay. So this gets really, I mean, it's really personal, right? So, um, so in my faith community, there are, there are various different positions. It's, it's all, uh, you get asked to, to do things. You're not, you don't lobby, you don't position, you don't apply. You just say, they say, would you be willing to do this? And in my faith community, uh, I'm now serving in a uh, leadership position that is a, a, a variety of different congregations helping to oversee and, and run those. So probably yeah. I think there's 10 or 11 of them. And uh, wow. uh, in, in my faith community, it's 
expected you're you're clean shaven. So you know, okay. uh, for I won't go you more are- than that because this is a, a work thing, and I don't want to get myself in the trouble or anyone else. But it's it's inspired me to to kind of reevaluate some things in my my life and how I'm doing. And uh, along with it came a a smoother, cleaner shaven uh, Matt Pierce, but. Uh, uh-huh. Also trying to be healthier. So that, that helps. And when you lose a little weight, you look better with the beard can okay. come off because you look a little bit better too. Uh, that makes a lot. You have lost weight. I do notice that. Do you, are you wearing contacts now? Uh, no, I pandemic has said, guess what? I don't need my glasses except for when I drive or for really far distance. I'm never far away from anything anymore. So <laughs> that's perfect. I love it. So Owen. Thanks for asking speedrun. Those that was great. Great answers, by the way. Uh, will you say the name of your video, the the uh, the brand again? So we'll try to capture yeah. that. Check us out at thevideomarketingschool.com. But we also have an advanced YouTube program at Make YouTube Easy. And both of those programs appeal to different types of businesses depending on where you are in your growth. So check out thevideomarketingschool.com or Make YouTube Easy dot com and get to know us better we'd love to meet you yeah guys go check out owen's stuff owen thank you so much for joining me today it's you know it's always fun and the the, and selfishly i love talking with you because i know i'm gonna walk away and have about 30 ideas of things like things that i've learned things now i'm gonna like want to try and process and so uh thank you so much for being part of our community and thank you for uh, you know for those that don't know, Owen's a great advocate for Camtasia out there talking about us, and we really appreciate you using it, and uh, uh, hopefully you've got a chance to check out the new version. Yeah, in fact, we just cut a video on the new version that we uploaded onto Instagram Reels, and in less than 24 hours, it is our most successful reel of all time. So... Go Camtasia 2021. I love the interface to me. It feels a little bit more modern. It feels a little bit more like mainstream and it operates, I, I think, more a, a very strong competitor to the Adobe products, which are ample, but require a pilot license to know how to operate. You know what I mean? Like Camtasia is just so stinking easy. It's the number one um, editor that we recommend. Awesome. Well, Owen, we appreciate your time. We know you're a busy guy. You've got uh, videos to make, people to consult with to help them making their videos. So we're going we're gonna to let you go here. But again, we can't go without just a heartfelt thanks. And uh, brother, we'll have to catch up sometime offline just to chat a little love bit more. So I love it. It's always a pleasure to hang out with the TechSmith community. Thanks for having me. You bet. We'll, we'll do it again sometime. So thanks to Owen Video, or formerly Owen Newspaper. Uh, if you guys have questions for us that you want to see us ask future contributors to the Visual Lounge, please let us know. We're going to let you go this week and, and just know that next week we're going to be talking about Camtasia. You just heard Owen say that one of the videos they made using Camtasia 2021 is their most successful ever on Instagram video reels. We're going to be going into some of those features, talking in depth about those things because, man, there is a lot of great stuff and we'll be showing it off. And I know from an audio perspective, if you're listening to the podcast, that doesn't make necessarily for a great audio podcast, but we'll do our best to make it accessible to you. At least you're going to get to learn about some of those new things and what they can do for you. With that said, I don't think there's any other questions. We want to thank Jesse O'Donnell for her time behind the scenes chatting with you guys, taking questions, responding in the chat and things like that. She, she is a fantastic help. I want to thank Owen Video once again and all of you for tuning in, tuning in and listening. We really appreciate it. So whatever you're doing, whether you're making videos, creating visuals, or just trying to communicate better, we hope that you take some time to level up every single day. We'll see you guys next week.